In this video, we're going to be chatting about how to play a carp, and most importantly, how to make sure that every one that you hook goes in the back of your landing net. Playing a carp is one of the most exciting parts of the sport. I absolutely love it. So let's get into it now. Okay, I just want to run you through the setup I'm using here. So we've got individual bank stick, we've got the R3, we've got a strong arm and a slap head. And these little slap heads, that line is just going to pop out of that on the take when I lift it up. Got the line in the line clip here. This improves the indication. So you get a nice little triangle here. And then on a strong take, that's going to come up. It's going to ping out the clip. Dunk. It's already knocked that off like that. And then we're onto the clutch. And the clutch will rotate like that. So these reels are what are called quick drag reels. That all the clutch adjustment is on the front here. I always set these clutches. I dial them up every time very carefully so that I have to physically pull the line. But you notice the rod's not going anywhere because of the rear rod rest here. Even on a really strong take, the rod's not moving at all and it's happy days. This is effectively hooking the fish before I even get to the rod. There is no striking involved. All I have to do when I get a bite is literally walk up to this rod, lift it and wind down. Let's have a go at that now. Okay. So what do we do when we get a bite? Alarms screaming away, bobbins dancing at the top, and I'm just gonna simply lift the rod up like that. Line pings out the clip. So the first thing I'm gonna do is tighten up this clutch. But as soon as I do that, I'm gonna flick off the anti-reverse. And when I do that, I keep my finger in place here to stop this bail arm flying round on me. Then I can simply wind down to connect to the fish and gently lift the rod into it like that. There's no kind of winding down and giving it the big one. This is not pike fishing, this is carp fishing. It's just a gentle wind down and we lift into the fish to make contact. Let's talk about how to play a carp. Let's have a look at hand position for a start. It's no good having your hand up there or up there. You wanna have it so you have a finger either side of the reel handle here. So some guys do it like that. I've always done it so that I have my, just my little finger going underneath the reel handle there. I don't know why, it just feels more natural and, and comfortable to me. Next, let's talk about arm position. If you're coming from a coarse fishing background, then you're probably used to playing a fish like this where we've got just got the butt of the rod leaning against the arm and we can wind down and play fish like that off the arm. That's all very well for small carp, but when they get bigger, they don't half pull. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go from that position to positioning the butt into your groin there. Somewhere between the hip and the lower abdomen there. From that point there, I can give the fish however much force I feel is necessary in order to win the fight. So at all times during the fight, we need to maintain a nice curve in the rod. This is what the rod is for. The rod is there to absorb the lunges. If I take the pressure off like that, we've got hardly any bend in that rod at all, and there's very little force holding that hook in place. You might be lucky and you might not lose a fish, but if you let the line go slack at all, the chance of that hook falling out and being swung out by the lead is much greater. If I really need to stop a fish, you know, going towards an ab obstacle or a snag or something, then yes, I will give them a bit of stick. But most of the time, I want a nice bend that looks something like that. This is a three pound, six ounce rod. So it's a fairly beefy rod. It's not an absolute broomstick. It's got some bend to it, but that is not enough. That for general carp fishing is too much unless we're trying to stop them going through a snag. We just want a nice amount of flex in the rod. Let's talk about rod angle. We're going to start with looking at the vertical angle. So this is about the kind of the ideal position for playing a carp. This way, if the carp takes line and I need to lower the rod like that, then I can do. There's space and time to do that. If you're already starting in this kind of low position, if you need to pay out line, if you're not backwinding, then you've got nowhere to go. You can bend that rod, but it's not going to give the carp any line. For the last few years, I've been playing all my fish on the back winding. But let's have a look at 
how I would used to play them, which is on the clutch. So I've just slackened the clutch off here, and if I raise my rod, I can simulate that clutch just spinning away like that. There we go, we're playing a fish on the clutch. And the problem with this, of course, is that every turn on the clutch is putting twist in the line. So this is why I don't do that. What we don't want to do is we don't want to wind while the clutch is spinning. Because if I do that, we're, all we're doing is putting a massive amount of twist into the line, which is going to cause you a great deal of ag later on in the session. If you are playing on a clutch and you want to gain some line, what you must do is lower the rod like that and then wind. This technique is called pumping and winding and I do exactly the same when I'm back winding. So to pay line out, I just back wind like that. And to gain line, I don't kind of wind with the rod stationary. I just bow the rod and wind like that. It's easier on the gearing. It's easier on your arms as well. And it just puts you in more control. Sometimes, of course, we can't just hold the rod straight out in front of us at a nice 45 degree angle like this. We have to apply a bit of side strain. You can see I have to go back to this kind of coarse fishing playing position like this but in order to give me extra control on the rod if I put my left hand here I can then apply more force rather than having to use all of my right arm. It's less fatiguing and it just puts me in more control. Even though I'm back winding I'm using my index finger here on the clutch to control that spool to stop it spinning because obviously I've let go of the reel handle. If things start to get a bit exciting, with a bit of practice, what you can do is just do a bit of that to pay off line while you're in this position. To put side strain on the other way, what I do is I move the butt from my right hip to my left hip. I can apply force like that. I can reach over there. It's quite an awkward position to do this, but you know, if you have to, it's definitely the only way to do it. One of the most challenging moments in the fight with a carp is when they come in close, when they come in under the tip. What happens is that we've got a reduced amount of line in contact with the fish, so we've got less elasticity in the line over that shorter distance. This means that if the carp suddenly plunges and goes away and you're not ready, then you're going to get a hook pull at that moment. When I used to play fish off the clutch, what I always used to do was stand a procedure was as the fish came in, I'd ease the clutch off a little bit so that it could just tick away like that and take line more comfortably. Nowadays, of course, I'm back winding. If I need to pay off line in that situation, I can gain line, I can pay off line exactly as I need to. This enables me to get the, keep the perfect tension in the tip, which definitely reduces hook pulls. One mistake I see from time to time when guys get the fish in close is that they keep the rod too low. They're down like that. The fish is on a very, very tight line. They've got nowhere to go. The reel handle is too far forward and the clutch is too far forward. So they're very awkward bending over in this position. If they're on the clutch and the fish goes, something's gonna break or the hook is just gonna rip out. Always keep the rod up by keeping the rod up, we maximise the amount of elasticity in the line because it's a big piece of elastic mono. You know, that's doing part of the playing for us and it's helping keeping that hook hold solid and secure. Let's have a look at the final crucial stage and that's the netting. Here I've got the rod up and we've got a pretty kind of a straight down vertical angle on the line here. If I pull on the rod, I am not going to move the carp closer to the net. In effect, any more pressure here, all I'm doing is lifting the carp's head out of the water. So I'm not gaining the desired result about drawing this carp into the net. Sure, the carp could you know, slide into the net himself, but I'm on a 12 foot rod here. I've got a standard six foot landing net pole with a 42 inch net. And if I try and net a carp in this position, it's just not going to happen. I'm not going to be able to draw him over the cord. Yes, I could do the old kind of salmon scoop like that, but that's not a really reliable way to net a carp. One option I've seen guys do, you can 
have the rod back like that. Yeah, kind of try and draw them over like that. That's more of a kind of match fishing style. And it's really not for me, to be honest, especially as I'm, I, I like to backwind. You know, I haven't got much control here and I'd only do that in desperate situations. So what I prefer is to get much lower down to change the angle. And what I normally do is I adopt this position. The rod goes in front of my right shin. I've still got control of the reel handle. I can still keep my finger on the bail arm here. In this position, I've got a better angle to draw the carp over the neck cord like that. I still have to reach forward a bit, but with steady pressure, I might just do a little adjustment like that just to kind of change if I need to get more of an angle to draw the fish in. It's much more effective way of doing it. If the fish suddenly makes a plunge, I can just drop the net like that and do whatever I need to do with a handle, lower the rod, let the clutch spin. It's all easy, it's all under control. Shorter rods, we're talking nine foot and 10 foot rods, are definitely easier to play and land carp on. A 12 foot rod, there's quite a lot of technique involved actually, but a 13 foot rod, it gets even more challenging. One of my friends, Alexandra, you'll actually see when he's playing a fish, the reel handles right down there. He's got his, the butt is almost on his, on his boot. And this is how he has to net fish. And he's using his left hand here to draw him over the cord. And he's got his net handle up like that. So it's all quite awkward. Landing carp on 13 foot rods, quite challenging. Landing carp on a nine foot rod is really very easy. One way of getting into backwinding without locking up the clutch fully is you can do a kind of hybrid scenario. So here, if I just back the clutch off a bit, just kind of to that, like this, I can still kind of give it plenty of control and I can backwind as well. But if you get caught unawares, then the clutch will still spin and pay out line. If you do find yourself in an epic battle with a big carp or a big cat, and you need to take a pause during that fight to rest your right arm, what you can do is if you just put your hand over the spool there, so you hold the reel, you hold the spool, and you hold the bail arm, you can just give your hand a bit of a kind of shake out while still maintaining control over the fish. If the fish obviously makes a sudden plunge, then you know, you can bow the, um, bow the rod and it just gives you that extra second to get your hand over there to put you back in control of the fish.